<laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Oh. oh man! <laughs> I, 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 hello, you know, that's about all he's got left is a bobble in the head, you know. <laughs> hey Bob, you've arrived. You're now in the bobble. Oh man! Oh, things people can come up with. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh glory. <laughs> Wait, what? I said is it live or is it memory? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> That thing gonna stare at me all morning, I guess. <laughs> I guess you couldn't hang a pin around his neck there again. <laughs> Glory. I tell you what, I <laughs> I just uh, I've been I just been thinking about Jesus all morning. Amen. What what a what a man, what a savior, Amen. what a Lord. It's been something like two thousand years since he was here, and and I believe he's more real today than he's ever been. Amen. No one but the Son of God could have such an effect. In the world. Chris, good to see you, buddy. Keith, good to see you. You walked in late, I guess. I didn't see you when you walked in. Your wife, what's your name again? Donna. What? Donna. Donna? Well, I should never forget that. We got another Donna here. You're the quiet one. She's the... <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, what was I saying? Talking about that man, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we can't get away from Jesus. Yeah. What a difference he makes in the world. Supposing Jesus hadn't come, you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. I don't know what the world would be today. If Jesus hadn't come, think about that. Scary. The uh, change that he brought into the world, the effect that he had in the world. Man, it's it. How, how in the world could people, anybody, <laughs> say that Jesus never existed or that he's just some, some guy that rose up, some crazy man thought he was something? How could anybody believe when they look around at the world and see what has happened in this world because of Jesus. The life, the joy, and the peace, and the order of the soul that he's brought into man. The connection that he made for us. The door that he opened 
for him. The path that he laid before him. The way that he made for us to go. Oh Lord. God in his infinite wisdom knew exactly what he was doing. And he intended to do what he has done even before the world was. God is all-knowing. God is infinite. And he knew everything that would take place on this planet that he made. And he intended for Jesus to come and to bring everlasting life and everlasting righteousness to this fallen world. Jesus is our hope. He's your hope this morning. I don't care what your situation is in your life today. Jesus is your hope. Hallelujah. And He's always there. He's always there. Everything in life will press you and even cause you to doubt Him. But let me tell you something this morning. He could never deny Himself. Whether you believe Him or not, He's still there. And I've often thought in myself, Lord, when I pray, how is it, Lord, that I, that, how is it that I know that you're hearing me? How is it I know you're there? And he comes back to me in my heart and says, it's all a matter of faith. Do you believe I'm there? When you pick up the Bible and read it, do you believe what you're reading? And that's what it is. And I got news for you, that faith is so strong and so powerful. It's like Jesus said, if you had faith, you could move mountains. You could move the whole world. Faith in God. Faith to believe. Faith to believe what God says. Faith to believe. We only had faith. Every time you pray, it's a matter of faith. It's not a matter of just reason. Everybody wants to reason God out. They want to reason, they want to reason Jesus out. They want to figure this out somehow. If I can just be convinced, if somebody can just talk to me and, and give me an intellectual conversation <laughs> and convince me somehow, give me a reason. You know what? Only God can do that. And God does that. If you receive my testimony and I receive yours, which we do. Now some people when they talk, you don't... You don't know if you can believe what they say or not. But when someone gives out a witness, when they're witnessing to what they have experienced in the Lord, you receive their testimony. You receive their witness. If we receive that witness from one another, if I can believe you, and you can believe me, the witness that God gives of His Son is even greater. Amen. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. And everyone who believes that witness of God is in them. Yes. 
I'm not a Christian just because I have been convinced by somebody. I'm not saved because I just happen to just go along with, with the, the status quo in the church. Or because grandma was saved. I don't belong to the church because mama did. I belong because God Himself, God Himself, hallelujah, God Himself gives to you personally, inwardly, that witness. Hallelujah. That's why you feel, that's, that's why, man, sometimes, you, you know, Pentecost will say, whoo, I feel the Lord. And they say, well, we don't act like that. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. You need to ask a question, why are they doing that? Why do people act like they do? Huh? Why do people act like they do? Well, maybe it's because there's something going on inside of them that you don't see. It's not just emotionalism. Now, I believe, I believe in emotions. I mean, believe in emotions. God made us emotional. Paul even commended the church of Corinth, Corinth for being that way. Behold what zeal, he says. If you look all those words up that he talks to the Corinthians about, one of them means emotions. You are, you, the Corinth was one of the most emotional churches in its day. And Paul commends them for it. Because there is a reality. There is a knowing that only God can give to you. Doesn't come from man. Doesn't come from religion. <laughs> doesn't come from your own mind. Or if your own per just your own persuasion. It's something that God <clears throat> makes happen. And when God makes that happen, you know it. Oh, yes. And no one can convince you otherwise. You want to be convinced? <laughs> no one can convince you otherwise. When you know that you know that you know Amen. what God has done inside of you. Amen. And nothing can take that away. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I want to read to you a scripture concerning these things that I'm talking to you about. In Romans, 15th chapter, <clears throat> verse 8. Romans 15, verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. For the truth of God, which mean, what that means is that Jesus, when he came, was not sent to anyone but to the house of Israel. He didn't come to preach to the Gentiles, to the rest of the world. When he came as a man, God sent him to the house of Israel to be a minister of the circumcision, which is the Jews, for the truth of God. He couldn't be anything else. If you're going to be a minister of God, you are a minister of truth. Amen. If God calls you to speak His word, then you will speak the word of truth. Amen. It's impossible not to. If you're speaking, not speaking the truth, God didn't send you. Amen. 
He was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. And that really, let me just say something here, that really uh, embraces all of time and the whole concept of truth. From the very beginning, when God began to speak and prophesy or speak through the prophets, what he would do and what would happen. That's the truth. Whatever God says is the truth. Jesus didn't come just to repeat what God said, but He came to fulfill Amen. what God said. And that's what we are today as Christians. We're not only those who repeat what God says, but our fulfillment of what he says. When we say, I'm saved, we've said it, but it's more than just words. Amen. It's the truth, but it's the truth about something that has taken place in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can get up and tell somebody that you believe, yeah, I believe, I believe, and be as empty as you can be. Amen. But brother, when somebody is received and they're out there telling somebody, you can tell there's something up with this guy. When somebody has met the Lord, uh, you have received something in your spirit that ignites you, inflames you. It revives you. It renews you. It moves you. It makes something new of you. When you truly meet the Lord. So that when you say, I'm saved, and I know the Lord. Man, there's power in your words. Yeah. When you say that and you've really met the Lord, your words ring. It's not a dull thud. You know, somebody says that and they don't know the Lord, just kind of falls to the ground. Plump. But when they really know the Lord, it rings out. And it and it and it creates this this warm spirit, this friendly, inviting spirit of God. That's the way Jesus was, you see. Amen. Everywhere that he went, he was this warm, inviting, friendly, merciful, good and kind spirit. And people like to be around him. The children love to be around Jesus. Amen? Amen. So if you want to be, if you want to be around Jesus, you've got to be like a child. Amen. The world will think you're, you, 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 you know, you don't make any sense what you're doing. You've got, you got better sense than to listen to this man. But Jesus said, unless you become as a little child... So praise God, I'm ready to join the, I'm ready to join the kids, amen? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to be part of the family of God. Amen? amen. I don't want to be so high-minded and so intellectual <laughs> and so smart and religious-minded that I can't accept what Jesus is or what he says. But when I really get to know him, a real change takes place. Yes. And all that you was before doesn't matter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
for you. Amen. Jesus kind of makes you forget what that was. Because what he has is so glorious that it outshines everything. It's like getting a glimpse of heaven. You get a glimpse of heaven, I'll guarantee you, you'll forget about that shack you're living in. <laughs> and I don't care if you live in a million dollar house, you'll forget about that shack when you see heaven. <laughs> because, you know, it outshines the glory of God when it fills your soul. Hallelujah. It's like a big, it's like a big flood of waters coming in that washes everything away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It washes it all away, man. Hallelujah. And you gotta go back to that shack. <laughs> but that's okay as long as I got Jesus with me. I got him in my heart. I got him in my soul. I got him in my mind. I got him everywhere. Jesus is with me all the time. And so whatever he has is mine day and night. And so when we begin to speak, we speak the truth. We live the truth. We are the fulfillment of that truth. God confirms that truth. He was a minister of the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 6, let me just read that. I don't want to misquote it. It's okay if I read it? Yes, sir. My Bible's falling apart, you see here? All these pages are falling out of this book. Don't worry about it, I got plenty of Bibles at home. Every time I turn around, somebody's giving me one. <laughs> Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given to you by Jesus Christ. That in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Amen. See, God never does anything without confirming it. Amen. He lets you know that what he is doing is the truth. He let you know that when he saved you and filled you with his spirit, that what's happening to you is true. Amen. And you don't have to worry about it. It's real. Amen. Regardless of what other people may say or think about you, what God does for you is between you and God. So don't be concerned about what others may think. If they love God, they ought to be rejoicing with you for what God has done in you and with you. Hallelujah. And everything that God does, He confirms that to you. How does He confirm it? Well, it says in one place, when the Lord sent His disciples out and He left and went back to heaven, He sent them out to preach the gospel to the world. He said that the Lord went with them, working with them, Confirming his word with signs that followed. Amen? Amen? So what is our sign that what we hear and what we believe is true? Have you seen a lightning bolt from heaven? Was somebody raised from the dead? Did the blind man see again? 
Did the crippled man walk again? Now, wait a minute. Y'all say, yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen when I got saved. Not one thing like that. Not one wonder or miracle took place. But there is one thing that did happen that confirmed to me. And that was right inside here. The love and the peace and the joy flooded my soul. God confirmed His Word to me. And everything that Jesus said is true. Amen. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes, That's what happened. Yes. That's how God confirmed His Word. How He confirmed that salvation, that redemption, that forgiveness that being born again. What happens to us when we're born again? Do angels flutter around? <laughs> There's a lot of people, that's not all people looking for is angels. I believe in angels. As a matter of fact, there's angels here this morning. Did you know that? There's angels in this room. You can't see them, they're here. But I'm not looking for them. Couldn't find them anyway. So. <laughs> well, I mean, <why> look? <laughs> no. There's a lot of people who've seen angels. How many believe the angels are real? And they've seen angels? I've seen, you know, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen an angel. How many of you ever seen an angel? Have you ever seen one? Have you? Good for you. <laughs> but we're not looking for angels. Amen. So, so we're not looking for, for certain, in particular, manifestations in order for us to believe. I'm not looking for God to shake a mountain like He did Sinai in order for me to believe. I'm not looking for some dead man been laying in his grave for four days to be raised up again in order for me to believe. I'm not looking for the blind man who's never seen to finally see instantly in order for me to believe. I'm not even looking to see Jesus literally standing in front of me with his arms outstretched a smile on his face. And I've seen him in, in dreams. He's appeared to me a couple of times in dreams. But I'm not just looking for that in order for me to believe. For Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen. Now what does he mean by that? Blessed or blessed are they who believe without seeing. If you really study that word there, the word blessed is something that God does in you. You know, it's not like Jesus saying, well, God, he's a pretty lucky fella. He believes me. Well, you know, he's a pretty happy dude. He believes me. That's not what he means. No. To be blessed is a work of God. Hallelujah. To everyone who believes has the work of God or God has wrought 
in his heart. Jesus said, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen. But he who believes oh, hallelujah. and comes to the light shows that God has wrought in him. So to be blessed is to have God confirm in your hearts the truth. Because if you don't have that confirmation from God, you ain't got nothing. You can reach out, reach out there and grab for that ring all you want, but you ain't got nothing unless you've got God confirming that in your heart. And when you know in your own, in your own heart and mind, not to satisfy somebody's wish for you. Well, I'll go down there and join the church and get baptized because, uh, you know, uh, Linda's been after me for all these years. I better go down there and do it. If you're doing that for her sake, forget about it. You're not going anywhere. But when God confirms that in your own heart and mind, brother, you don't need anybody else. Hallelujah. You don't need anybody to tell you anything. God has already told you what you need to know. Whew, glory to God. Somebody said, well, why do you jump and shout like that? Because God done told me something, man. He done, he done told me something. Why do I sing like I sing? Because God done done something inside me that makes me want to sing, praise God. Why do you want to preach like you do? Because God has said something inside of me. Why do you want to live for God like you do? Because Jesus has done something inside of me. Hallelujah. I don't go to church just because I'm supposed to. When we get, when we bring it down to that supposed to uh, line that we say all the time, well, you're supposed to. You're getting on dangerous ground. You're about to cross over away from grace into the law. And you're trying to justify yourself by what you do. But brother, as long as you keep Jesus in there, And you, you understand the reason why. Yes. You are what you are. And who you are. That's what matters. Amen. And then the preacher won't have to worry about you going to church. You'll show up. <laughs> because you want to gather together with your brothers and your sisters. You need the fellowship of one another. Whether it's in a little old building like this or a big cathedral or in your living room, you need to gather together with somebody somewhere sometime. Amen. Amen. And don't worry about everybody else in the crowd. Be who you are. And, and act the way you act. <laughs> if you want to sit there and cry, we'll sit there and cry. Yeah. But for crying out loud, at least cry. <laughs> if you get up and dance and shout, then get up and dance and shout. If somebody next to you don't like it, that's okay. They don't know what's going on inside you. You see, it's like Abraham Lincoln said. How do you say it? You can please some of the people. Well, y'all know what he said. Right? <laughs> you can't please everybody all the time. Jesus didn't come worrying about who he pleased, but the Father. But you see, the good thing about it is, you're not doing something just so to make sure you make the points. I did that one. I did that one. Uh huh, I did that one. I don't believe Jesus walked around with a, with a little notebook in his pocket no. and a pencil and writing it down. Hmm, I did that one. 
How was that, Father? That was pretty good, okay. He did what he did. He didn't worry about anybody else. Not because he was trying to make points. <laughs> you are a Christian this morning, not because you're trying to make points. Did you hear me? You're a Christian not because you're trying to make good. You are because God has wrought in your hearts. You want to do good? You want to make good with God? But it's only because a change God has confirmed in your spirit. Hallelujah. Everything that God, listen to, just remember this. Everything that God does, He confirms it. If He tells you to get saved, to repent and believe and be saved, and when that happens, He will confirm that to you. It's not just an empty ascent. God does not expect anybody to believe anything he does or says without confirming it to you. It's always been that way. When he led Israel out of the bondage in Egypt, over and over and over again, he proved himself to them in signs and wonders and miracles. Every time God has ever done anything, He has always confirmed what He said He was going to do. When Jesus came, it was no different. He had to come and do what He did in miracles and signs and wonders and healings. He healed thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands. The world should, could not contain the books that should be written, John said, of all the things that Jesus said and did. So we only have just a, a, a taste, just a, little, just a little bit of what Jesus actually did and said, written in the Gospels. But these are written that you might believe upon the Son of God, yes, upon you. His name, and have fellowship with us. Just a little bit of Jesus. <laughs> Just a little bit of Jesus goes a long way. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? Just a little bit of Jesus goes a long way. One drop. Glory. One drop. A half a drop. <laughs> Come on. Of his blood yeah. is enough to cleanse the whole world. Yeah. No. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> oh, <come> on. <laughs> One drop of his blood is enough to cleanse every sin in the whole world. Amen. And yet, Amen. He poured it out. Mm. Glory. How much then is the blood of Jesus worth? It's eternal. The worth of His blood, of His sacrifice, of His love, is eternal. It's never ending. We are redeemed forever. We are washed and we are made perfect by that one sacrifice yes, forever. Because of the worth of His blood, that's why. The worth is not up to me. It's His blood. Hallelujah. It's not what I can do 
to make it good. It's the blood that makes it so. God confirms that to us in our hearts. Hallelujah. To everyone who believes, God confirms in your heart. Yes, you are forgiven. Yes, you are washed. Yes, you are redeemed. Yes, the angels rejoice over you. Yes, heaven awaits you. Yes. 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 Every time you hear the Holy Spirit, He is saying, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Every time you read the Scriptures, it's saying the same thing to your spirit. Amen, and Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Amen. So be it. So be it. Yes, yes. All the promises of God are what? Yay! And Amen! In Christ Jesus. God confirms to you. What is God's confirmation? Well, if I just see so-and-so... You know, like I like to see them change a little bit there. <laughs> God will just work a miracle. You like Herod. You like Herod the king. Yeah. When they brought Jesus in before, remember they went to Pilate and Pilate sent him over to Herod. Herod said, uh huh. Well, I heard about you. Stand up there. Go ahead. It's all right. <laughs> Stand up. He said, yeah, huh? Just stand right there. Don't, don't follow me. Just stand right there and look around. Huh? I'm going to go around you. That's a pretty good shape for an old man. <laughs> Jesus is standing there before Herod. He, Herod's looking at it, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He's looking at it, looking at it, mm-hmm. I hear about you. How about a miracle? <laughs> you want to perform a miracle for me? I was really anxious when I found out you were coming today. <laughs> I was really anxious because I want to see something you can do. Perform a miracle. You know, I made a movie about that one guy. He got a cup. He said, turn that cup into gold. You do that? No. He was disappointed. Go ahead and sit down. <laughs> People, instead of the truth being confirmed in their hearts, they're only, they're only, they only want to be persuaded about what they want. Their self. Well, I just ain't going to believe unless. Unless. The Lord isn't offering you this gift based on that assumption. Don't be looking for a miracle that you can see. Don't be looking for some outward manifestation. Right. Listen to what God is saying. Paul says, <coughs> I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. I didn't come here to demonstrate to you how intelligent I am. I haven't stood up here and spoke to you to show you how eloquent I can speak to you. I'm so eloquent I have a silver tongue and I'm going to convince you <laughs> what I say. And there's a lot of guys that way. Oh, yeah. People in the world are mesmerizing. 
They really are. Things of this world can be mesmerizing to you. Paul says, I'm not here to play a trick on you. I'm not here to mesmerize you with words. I haven't come to the world to use trickery or silvery flowing tongue or to demonstrate something like that to you. But I come to you in the power and demonstration of the Spirit. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. These are not just words of men. The words of Jesus is not just the words of some guy who rose up to create a following for himself. His words are the very words of God. And the kingdom of God is power. Hallelujah. And just what I read to in Corinthians, that has been confirmed in you. Man, let me tell you something this morning. If you believe on Jesus, and He's in your heart this morning, you have power yes. Amen. residing in your bosom. Amen. And the devil trembles every time you come around. Yes. Glory. Don't be afraid of this world because the world's afraid of you. Don't be afraid to stand in front of anybody because what you have inside of you, hallelujah, they will not be able to gainsay, as it says, nor resist. But you will be given the words to speak at the appointed time when you need it. Because it is the very power and word of the living God. God confirms Himself inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not just convinced because you're just convinced. You're convinced because God convinced you. Amen. I am convinced. Paul says, I am convinced. Why was he so convinced? Because the love of God flooded his soul. Are you convinced this morning? Amen. Then don't be, don't be sheepish. <laughs> be a lioness. <laughs> Be bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Yes. And tread, and tread where, where ain't go where angels tread to fear, uh, fear to tread. <laughs> go where angels fear to tread. Huh? Have you ever thought about that? Angels are afraid to go there? But you ain't. No, sir. Because you're something more than an angel. Yes. You know, little babies, I love babies. You know, how many love babies? I love babies. We all love babies. We're not abortionists around here. We all love babies. And we always call little babies little angels. And we mean that in a very sincere way. And that's, that's, I guess that's the most, how do we say it? Uh, the most delicate, the most uh, sincere, the most loving, uh, compassionate, passionate thing we could say because, you know, they're such a darling thing that God's given to us. Little babies, precious, precious, precious. But we're not angels. We're children of God. Hallelujah. One day angels are going to be standing by listening to you. And when you tell them that you need something, they'll go do it. The angels are standing by waiting. There's a lot of things they don't know that they learn from the church. Things that's been revealed to us have not been revealed to angels. Things that we have inside of us, angels don't have. 
What has happened to you has never happened to angels. They've never been redeemed. They don't know what it means to live in sin and darkness and fear and, and, and the depths of, of this world and to be redeemed and saved and born again. They don't know that. But you do. God has confirmed His promise to you. Not to the angels. Jesus didn't die for angels. He died for you. Jesus didn't redeem angels. He redeems you. And He made you His own. And what He has done for you, oh, what a glorious thing that He has done. And God is, God is wanting to remind you this morning. The next time you get down to pray, remember. Remember what God has done for you. You know, it's good to do that. It's good to do that from time to time. To remember. Because sometimes we get so busy about, busy about our, our life and, and, and going about and doing things, we get down to pray and kind of a routine like thing we go through. Sometimes we need to stop and remember what God has literally done in you. Yes, God. And get a hold of that again. Yes. Remember the day that God saved you for the first time in your life. And the joy and the peace and the love that filled your heart. Remember that day. And get a hold of that again. Renew that love. Renew that joy. Renew that peace. Renew that, that fellowship that you have with God. Renew that love that you have. Hallelujah. Be confirmed all over again. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Be reassured over and over and over again. Hallelujah. The strongest among us, the strongest Christian among us, need that. Yes, amen. No matter who you are this morning, you need to be confirmed. Yes, hallelujah. You need to know in yourselves. Amen. You need to refresh your memory. Refresh your love. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that emboldens you. Even in your approach to God, yes. it emboldens your prayers with God. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And you get down before God, you don't feel like... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you come to God empty like. You come to God with your head down. You, you, just, you know, you come to God just... <laughs> you don't forgot who you was, who you are. You've gone so far away and got, you've neglected God so long, you just, you know, you know, you know, like, you know, you don't forgot. It's like a hound dog we got the house. <laughs> Tom gave us a dog and he has a hound dog and he, and he had to get rid of it. And so we said, we'll take him for a while. And he was going to give him to somebody else that wanted it. And, and we said, we don't want the dog. I don't want the dog. I don't want the dog. I don't want, he brought him over anyhow. So we was keeping the dog. It's a beautiful, good dog. It's just a good dog. It's just the best dog in the world. And I said, well, we need to get rid of this dog. I don't want to keep the dog. No, I don't want the dog. <laughs> Hit dog, dog, come up to me and, and wiggle his tail, sit down in front of me and look at me straight in the eye with them, with them hound dog eyes. You know. I looked down at him, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> his tail starts wiggling. He keeps staring at me. What do you want, boy? What do you want? <laughs> he takes off running towards the door. He wants to go outside, you see. And so, <laughs> well, Tom came over uh, yesterday, him and his family, and took care of the dog, gave him a bath, and brought him some food. Well, I found somebody wants a dog. I said, yeah? 
Who is he? Well, I don't know the guy. I don't know him. Just some strange guy. I don't hardly know him. I said, I said, Tom, we'll keep the dog. I hate for the dog to go to somebody that we don't even know. You know and when he goes over there, he won't be able to go visit and see your dog. But if he's over here, you can come any time you want to see your dog. So we'll keep the dog. But I can go outside and go somewhere and come back, and that dog acts like he don't know who I am. I mean, he jumps in my lap or when I'm sitting on the couch. he jump on my lap and want to lay there for hours if I let him. I pet him. I play with him. I, I spend time with him. Uh, you know, and I'm... And I, I'm not supposed to do that. They gave him little bites of food, you know. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Cut this part out of the video, John. <laughs> I mean, Tom might be listening. <laughs> but that dog forget who I am. And I come in after I've been gone for a while. I come back in. And I, I'll come in the door and he'll walk up and see, and see me and start barking at me. Run, off, run away. <laughs> I said, what is wrong with you, dog? <laughs> you know? And I said, come here, come here. And he'll, he'll kind of come in and he'll turn around and run away. And he's been in my house for months. <laughs> I mean, I'm the only guy in the house that feeds him for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm the only one that really puts him in my lap. Nobody else will do that, but I'll do that. I play with him, I'll play with him for hours, take them silly bones he's got and jerk and play and pull with him on the bones, you know. And I come in from going to the grocery store and he treats me like a stranger. I said, dog, there's something wrong with you. You got the shortest memory of any animal I've ever seen. He's keeping you in your place, <laughs> I mean, he forgets who I am until I go over and sit down in my chair and say, come on. And he'll run, jump up in my lap. He sniffed me all over. Then he knows who I am. Everything's okay. That's what you need to do. You need to go jump in the Savior's lap. <laughs> Because you done forgot who he was. Yes. Amen. He forgot who you are. Amen. The Lord's been there all the time. He is your master. Yes. Your Lord and your Savior. Thank you. Thank he is the God of your life. He is the hero of your life. He is the one who saved you, redeemed you, delivered you, forgave you, and died for you. He lives for you. He provides for you. And He's never forgotten you. Amen. Amen. Come to Him. Yes, and know who He is. And let Him confirm His love to you once again. Amen. Amen. God's that way. Just like me and the dog, I'm petting Him now. <laughs> Do you have a bald dog? <laughs> yeah. It's all right, boy. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right, boy. It's, it's calm down. It's all right. That's the way the Lord is. Yes, amen. He's saying, calm down. Thank you, Lord. I'm here. Now you know who I am? Do you know who you are? <laughs> you're, my, you're my dog. <laughs> and I'm your master. I'm the one that feeds you, remember? I'm the one that takes you outside and plays with toys with you, remember? I'm the one that loves you. I'm the one that gives you free reign in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And once again, He confirms His love. 
Everything God does, He confirms it to you. That's what we need. Confirmation. Instead of being burdened down with the cares of life. Burdened down with problems and questions and troubles, confusion and dissatisfaction and discouragement. Shaking our head. Getting all caught up in everything. We need His love confirmed in our hearts again. And He does that. Yeah. His Holy Spirit draws us to Himself. God confirms Himself over and over and over again to establish you, to make you strong, to encourage you, to build you up. That's why He put preachers in the church and teachers and evangelists and missionaries and pan all these to build you up, to edify you, to admonish you, to remind you. And we're all in this together. You know, the preacher ain't some, something different than you. He's just like you are. He's a sheep just like you. Amen? Amen. And we all need to hear it. We all need to hear it once more. One more time. We need to feel it one more time. We need to know it one more time. We need to experience it one more time. We need to have it one more time. Hallelujah. When we come, that's why we come to church and on Sunday morning and worship God. Because we need to have a good service one more time. We need to fellowship with one another one more time. When you read the Bible, you need to read it one more time. Yeah. You need to confirm and reconfirm. Establish and reestablish. You need to be built up and edified. That means built up more and more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. You need every branch strengthened. Stick your arm out there. You need that branch strengthened. Stick the other one out there. You need your branches strengthened. Put your legs up there. Everything about you needs strengthening. You need to, you need to know that that life is flowing through you. Glory to God. When you get up in the morning, you're not looking for coffee, you're looking for Jesus. <laughs> you can get your coffee next. <laughs> Jesus, sit down and drink a cup with you. If you see. <laughs> well, let's get, let's get Jesus around the, the breakfast table, around the lunch table. Let's get him around the dinner table. Remember that sermon I preached on Easter about eating with Jesus? A lot of folks act like they didn't like it. I like the sermon. I don't know about that. I like the sermon. <laughs> I want to spend time with Jesus. I want to eat and be filled with Jesus. Hallelujah. He wants to confirm Himself and assure our hearts before God because we need it so desperately need it all the time. Why is that, Brother Bob? Because we are being, uh, the enemy is constantly, the enemy is constantly coming at us. And we need to be reinforced, reassured, re-strengthened. Glory to God. So that when we face the giant, we won't be afraid. We won't be afraid. Pick up five stones. Don't just pick up one. Pick up five. Praise God. I don't know why David did that. There's a lot of reasons why, maybe. But he probably got so excited about the Lord and what he was doing, what he was saying, he got to feeling it. <laughs> Who is this guy anyway? Who is this giant that speaks out like this against the armies of the living God? Who does he think he is? Well, give me some stones around here, praise God. He went down there, here, I'll just give him. He started grabbing stones, putting them in his bag. That's the way you're going to be. You're reassured. The outcome is
is yours. That's confirmed in your spirit. The outcome is yours. You're going to win this battle. You're going to win. The victory is yours. I don't care how big the giant gets. The victory is yours. It doesn't matter what you're facing. God has confirmed it to you. Hallelujah. We're not going to take no for an answer. We're not going to take that. We're not going to take the, the defeat. We're going, to, we're going to have the victory. We're not going to have nothing. We're going to have victory. That's the Spirit of God. That's the way of God. That's the mind of God. We are going to have victory. This church right here, praise God, we started this church. I said, Lord, show us where you want us to go. And he did. And we are a victorious church. The devil doesn't like this church because the Spirit of God is here. But I got news for him. The Word of God has confirmed it to me. This church is victorious. You are victorious in Christ. I'm going to preach to you the words of Jesus Christ, and that is the only vic- that's the, that is your victory. I want you to grow and learn and, be- and become knowledgeable in the, in the words of Jesus and know all about Him so that you will be looking to Him and nothing else. I want you to get to know Him more and more and more in your walk with God. I want you to get to know Jesus in such a personal way. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord. Hallelujah. Not in a religious way. Not in a passing way. Right. Passing thoughts. No. You know, passing thought. Jesus comes along. Oh, there He goes. There He went. <laughs> Everyone went by. See you, see you next Sunday. <laughs> but walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, breathing with Jesus, Amen. living with Jesus, Amen. thinking with Jesus. Every time I, you know, it, it's really something what God's done in my life. Because every time I turn around, it's, it's the same thing. I wonder what Jesus thinks about this. <laughs> Lord, what do you think? <laughs> Everything. And if it's something that I really already know, you know, something that I shouldn't have done, that I, that I had, that something I should do and hadn't done, the Lord just says to me, <laughs> you know what I think. <laughs> See the relationship we have with Him? It's so close that, I mean, ain't nothing escapes him. Forget it. You ain't going to hide anything from him. He knows everything about you, what you're thinking, what you're doing, and what you ain't doing. He knows. And when you get to that point in your life, he says, Lord, everything about me concerns you. Everything about me concerns you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you you have you have just a scat, you you've just moved in. You just moved into my life and established yourself in my life, and you 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 just, just taking up all the room in my life. Getting to where Jesus is is taking up more and more room. There ain't gonna be hardly enough room left for anything else. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry, Winston. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stand with me, everybody. I didn't get to half my sermon. <laughs> you know, the Word of God is so full in that it speaks to our everyday life. There's so much for us to, to hear from God that we can relate to. There's just no end to it. You ever meet anybody there's no end to their talking? <laughs> I've been that way in past, time past. You're talking to somebody and they talk, 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 talk. 
You know, you, you know they're just saying, oh, I wish you'd hurry up and shut up, I gotta go. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm on Sunday morning, you know. <laughs> I wish you heard him get pre through preaching. I got to go. <laughs> but God has something to say. There's no end. You ever think about that? God never runs out of words or thoughts. He doesn't sit back and say, well, He's constantly moving. Constantly speaking. Constantly dealing with. Dealing with you. Just sometimes we ignore him. We don't think God's speaking. He's speaking all right. We're ignoring him, but he's speaking okay. And he's speaking loud enough you can hear him. But you ain't listening. Amen. That's right. God is God all the time. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. But we change our attitudes and our thoughts and our habits and our wants, our desires. You know, we got we ain't got time. We got time for other things, but sometimes we ain't got time for God. But God always has time for us. Amen. He's always there for us. I'm so glad He's that way. Because when I, if, I live, if I live off of Him and go somewhere else, when I come back, He's there. Good thing He didn't leave, off, <laughs> he didn't leave me off and go somewhere else. When I, when, you know, when I came back, He's gone. Where'd He go? <laughs> Can you imagine how God feels? He looks at us and says, well, where did he go? There he goes again. <laughs> Lord says, I'll wait on him. But I think when I go down there, God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> he goes down there where I told him not to go. I think I'll go down there. Just watch. <laughs> I think I'll go down there. Aggravate him a little bit. <laughs> rib him a little bit <laughs> wherever you go God's going to be there yes. to convict you convince you speak to you appeal to you and love you let's not, let's not reject the Lord or turn him away so many times, even as children of God, we, we turn Him away. Let's don't turn Him away. Let's seek Him with all of our heart. Amen. Amen. Father, this morning, thank You, Lord, for being there for us and confirming Your love and Your Word to us. The knowledge and the knowing that we have that You've confirmed inside of us is so beautiful. And we know, Lord, that there's nothing to compare. There's nothing to compare with the relationship that we have with you. Forgive us for our weakness in our flesh, for going after the things that we desire for ourselves rather than you. Lord, I believe you've given us many things to enjoy in life and to have and bless us with all the good things in life. But help us never to forget you that we never forget you. Hallelujah. That we grow in you, become strong and immovable, rooted and grounded in the truth because we are testimonies of that truth. We're a witness of your confirmation. You have confirmed it in our souls. Can't be taken away. We can forget it sometime, but Lord, I can't take it away. If it's forever there, if it ever remains, Lord, lift us up higher. Refresh our minds, refresh our hearts. In Jesus' name.